No worries at all. All right, shall we get started? We have 14 people here. Uh, I don't know the normal welcome to this. I don't, I don't know that <laughs> we kind of like fell off with our normal routine. So, uh, oh man, playing it. You're doing great here today. <laughs> welcome all you cool cats and kittens. Oh. <laughs> PWA Studio Community Sync. Uh, today is Friday, May 22nd. Uh, and we have demos from Steven with zero total checkout and Revanth with the service worker caching and expired payment nods. So, um, Steven, you want to kick us off? All right. Sure, sure. Okay. <clears throat> As always, I'm extremely prepared for this demo. <laughs> I hope this works. Um, so, uh, just to give some background on this on this issue, um, in the in the in the checkout page we've been working on, we're we're very close to finishing, uh, but there was an edge case that we hadn't planned for, which is that there's what's called in Magento a zero total checkout, and um, that's a configurable option, so I don't exactly know what it means, but basically if if there is a if the cart total is zero, um, there is a payment method that must be selected on the cart called free. Uh, and this is just sort of like a, a requirement. So if the if the if the zero total checkout is enabled, then uh, then the cart must have that value selected on it um, in the back end. And it doesn't do it automatically. So if you if you're working through your you know you're 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 working through an order and uh, you 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 end up with zero total through adding a gift card or through removing or having a gift card and then removing an item that reduces your total under the gift card covered amount, um, then uh, the server doesn't do it automatically, and we have to tell it to apply the free method. So this this ticket with uh, quite a few changes um, you know as, e as simple as it sounds there's there's quite a few changes that were involved but the 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 core of it is that um, is that whenever is that we basically monitor through all the cart mutations that can occur and I can pull this up in the in the change if it uh oh my internet's working there you go um, oh this is slow Am I lagging on, on the call? I mean, I can find you. Scrolling okay. through GitHub. It's, just, it's really slow for GitHub, anyways. So, uh, so uh, where was I? So, anytime we make a mutation, we need to check to see that if free is now available. And that's because we have this, um, this effect in the payment information component that's listening to know whether or not free is available. And if it is, we need to automatically select it. It's just sort of implied that it's the only available value. So um, I'll just work through Happy Path and show you how that works. And then um, maybe if anyone has suggestions or comments about things that I missed or didn't think about, that'd be great. Um, but just so, just to give you an idea, like I'll just work this as if I'm a user. So I'm, I, I have a gift card, um, you know, it's $120. Uh, and I like this skirt a lot but I'm gonna buy two of it. So we'll add those to the cart. We'll go to our cart now. Um, and I'll enter my gift card that I re totally remember. I hope this works. Cool. So the gift card was added. Total's now 116. Proceed to checkout. Enter some information. Shipping information. Um, free. Actually, just for just for the demo's sake, let's just say that it. Let's just say fixed is the is the current option. So right now the total was like 116 plus uh plus ten dollars shipping or no sorry, 118 times two plus ten dollars shipping. Um, so we know we have the gift card applied from the cart page, uh, but it's asking for credit card information. And then I review my order. I have a debugger breakpoint on accident. Uh, and so you get to the review view. I'll just make this a little bit bigger so that it's easier to see in the demo. 
Um, and then let's just say, you know, they're like, oh, it's 126 bucks. You know, my gift card was only 120. Um, how do I change this? How do I, what if I, what if I'm like, I actually don't want two items. Uh, so maybe they click their back button, go back to their cart. I know this is the workflow on, um, the A word, but, uh, we're not trying to be them. So let's just say I remove the item. Um, and then I go back to checkout. Well, the, it's still valid, right? It's not as, it's not a zero total checkout. Uh, but now maybe, maybe if the total, uh, for some reason there was a rule that's applied that makes shipping free payment information payment information is not required because the total is now zero and you can't see that on the mobile view but um what is on desktop you can see that the total is zero so anytime the anytime the the total changes away from zero we must require the card and anytime we go back to zero we must we must display free payment information to make it um, uh, uh, an allowable order. Because if you try to place an order without setting that free method, um, it, it it fails. GraphQL tells us there's a problem. So um, I know maybe on the surface is a really straightforward you know example uh, from the UI perspective. It's just if it's zero, then it's then it shows no payment information required. But if it's um, if it's more than zero then require a credit card. But the logic to do that was kind of uh, touchy because of the the implicit nature of, of applying this free payment method. Um, so yeah, I basically had to test all the different ways that a user could get to this page with a zero total and then go back from having a zero total. You know, maybe they remove their gift card. Maybe this is actually pretty straightforward if I just add, you know, change the shipping method back and forth. Um, but either way must work and they must be able to get back to their checkout page and have that if they have valid data We want to make sure it's still the current valid state. So um, Hopefully by the time this PR gets merged and I fix all the tests the, the checkout page will just it's one more use case that will be um, working on the checkout page So nice. I didn't really That's go awesome. into the code because there's a lot there, but um, if anybody has Suggestions or thoughts, I'd love to hear them. Um, Just have a quick question. Uh, when you said the uh, the use free method, method is mm -hmm. that something that comes from GraphQL? Is that a, a check that you have? How yes. do you determine so, whether to show the payment or not? So yes, so that that so first of all, uh, just a second ago, I was showing the mutation. So all the mutations that affect cart that can affect the cart total. Uh, mm -hmm. now return um, available payment methods or they request that information in okay. their response right and so that and right. so and so we have an effect here uh, hide the computations. so um, so here here's the important effects so whenever available payment methods changes we mm -hmm. reset the uh, this is payment information by the way this is the talent for payment information the um, uh, mm -hmm. this section right here where a credit card is. Mm -hmm. So anytime available payment methods changes, the that section resets. Um, and this this okay. is coming from GraphQL, this available payment methods. And then um, if it's ever available, if it's in that, if that, if, so, so there are other things that could make that method, the methods array change. But if free is available, then we have to automatically select it for the user. So we uh, we make this mutation and then we say we're done. And so that's what you see here when free, so right now, if I looked at the GraphQL backend, free would not be available if I queried for, for what available okay. payment methods were on this card. So free is a code that you receive as a payment method. Yeah, yeah, free is a okay. code. So um, if I look, I can dig into. I was just wondering how, how it would work with a, a web payment or if you use an Apple Pay, because. Uh, Right. Using Apple well, Pay, then we, not going to show credit cards. Yeah, so we uh, haven't. But, but yes, it's it's a code. We haven't gone that far. We 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 hard coded Braintree as the current only selection. Um, right. There's also uh, in this in this PR I made it so that you could have multiple. Um, I let's see what was that payment methods. So inside payment methods, there's like a component here. 
well, I have to, I'd have to, I'd have to rewrite this. But basically, if you have an implementation for the code, mm -hmm. you can just add it to this this object, this map, and then the payment methods component will, the parent component will iterate over whatever available payment methods there are for like the current data, and <clears throat> and then it will render each of them um, for you. So right now we only okay. have rate tree, so that's what you see. Uh, but there could be check money order. There could be another um, option for PayPal, etc. So it's uh, you know completely okay. customizable and hopefully uh, generic enough that people can add their own implementations as they want. Okay, but as far as the free, is it's just a code that you receive mm -hmm. as an available. Right. So, as an available. Yeah. Available so that payment. was. So you use that too. Yeah. Okay. So that was it. That's that's actually it's an interesting point you bring up because um, this is a topic we kind of talked about on the team during the review of this PR, free comes back as an available method. So technically we check it here inside payment methods. Uh, if free had an implementation, we could list it here and we could actually have some display. Mm -hmm. It would just be another checkbox under here. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's an implied, like an it's, it's a value that should be automatically selected if available, we don't have an implementation for it. And uh, we just have that effect that you saw in the parent payment information. But um, it's totally doable that we could add it as an implementation as a, 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 like we have with a credit card for Braintree. We could have a free mm -hmm. component that does the same effect, of, basically. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to find it. But um, if I look at the network, make this update call, we can look I at the it, response it, for the shipping message. It's probably shown in Apollo, right, in your Apollo tab. Yeah, I was trying to find it, but it's kind of that's nasty to look at. Okay. So I can just, I was just showing here. We made the we made the mutation to go to free and the and the inside the available uh, payment methods array free was there. When I set the shipping method back to a non non zero value, making the cart three dollars, uh, the available payment method does not include free. So okay. So uh, so yeah, that this little snippet here, available payment methods, is is required anytime you make a mutation that um, that could uh, affect the the free methods. Um, we could possibly get around this by doing like a network only call for this guy. Maybe I think there are some uh, GraphQL patterns that I haven't quite um, tried, but. Um, one easy way is just to make sure the cache is always the valid state for the whole app, which is what we're doing. So any all the mutations that make cart mutations just say, or that make cart mutations that affect the value of the cart, just uh, ask for this data. Okay. Cool. That's awesome. Thanks, Steven. Any other questions for Steven? Check the chat real quick. Uh, Lars just says this is much better to extend. Thank you. Cool. Nice. All right. Cool. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, Revant, you ready? Yeah. Uh, All right. Can I guess you? Yep. Okay. Uh, thanks for joining. The first one I would like to go with is the the checkout experience. Uh, also, because we have seen it just now in Steven's um, demo. Okay, uh, this also includes the payment information. Can you see the screen right now? It should be showing the checkout page. Yep, we can see it. Okay. Okay. Uh, so right now I am on the develop branch. Let's um, enter something. I'll give a default payment method. Okay. Uh, right now, payment nonce is generated and it has been uploaded to the back end. The problem is uh, each payment nonce that has been generated has a TTL on it. By default, it's three hours, but the back end can change it. Uh, the issue happens when the payment nonce has expired and when you click the place order button, like maybe you come back after four or five hours, and that's when you click the place order button. Uh, the server fails because the payment nonce is not valid anymore. Like Braintree cannot identify it. So uh, right now we can emulate it using, uh, I'm using the Apollo tab. Uh, I give the same cart ID and I'm giving an invalid payment nonce just to you know create the error. Uh, as we do this, 
we can see that the mutation went through. And right now, even though we don't see it here because we haven't refreshed the page, the, the payment nonce has been expired. And once you click place order to simulate like a three hour uh, wait time, the server crashes. Like you don't see anything, like it takes a while. And then you see an error message saying something went wrong, but it actually doesn't tell you what went wrong. And the payment, uh, the nonce still stays here. Like the payment summary still stays here. And that's an issue because the user needs to know what exactly went wrong. So with this particular PR, uh, handling invalid brain, uh, brain tree nonce, uh, I'm implementing a, a place uh, in the use checkout, a way for all the components beneath it, like the shipping information, shipping method, and payment information, to let them know of any errors that comes through and writing handlers into them so they can handle each one of those. Because the place order happens at the use checkout level, but all these children, they don't, they don't contribute to place order. So if an error happens here, you have to drill down, you like send the error messages down to each one of these children and it will be handled in their own talents. So there are multiple pieces involved right now. If we look at the example, um, the expired payment notes. Okay, let's look at the branch. Okay, so that's where we are right now. And I have the watch server going on right now. So yeah, is it done? Looks like it is done building. And let's clear the cache. Okay. Awesome. So we are back to where we were. Let's enter the same information again. <clears throat> Sorry. The three. Okay. Review order. Okay. So the nouns again, we'll do the same thing. We'll expire the payment nouns. Let's look at the cart ID. Maybe it would have changed. Go to Apollo. Come on. Sometimes after refresh, Apollo doesn't pick up. Okay. Okay. Right now I'm doing the same thing. Uh, for this particular cart ID, I'm invalidating the payment nonce. Okay, that's done. And if I click place order, the same error comes back through the network. It's still going on, it's pending right now. For some reason they're slow. Okay, you'll see that uh, it gives the right information saying the transaction has been declined. And the same happens like um, the payment, since the payment nonce is expired, it will be invalidated and you'll be back to the step where you have to enter the payment information once again. Uh, right now, this PR handles uh, payment information error handling, uh, but it also provides a way for other components like shipping method and shipping information to handle the errors as well. And they will be handled in their respective PRs. An example would be like you selected a payment method and like you come back after five hours and the payment method is not available anymore. So the, it has to be invalidated and like you have to enter the payment method once again. Uh, that, that is a valid example. So the PR is still open. Uh, we had some conversations around it. And if someone is interested, they can uh, look, at it, uh, look at the PR and like, you know, make any suggestions or things that we have missed. Any questions around that? That's awesome, dude. Thanks, Ali. Ivan, does this flow be applicable for a registered user? Uh, so right now, we don't have uh, the difference between a saved payment method uh, for an authenticated user and unsaved payment method for a guest user. Uh, right now, everything is the same for all of them. Okay. So at this point, it's there's no difference. But yeah, it's a good question. Like once we implement authenticated payment users, uh, the, at that point, I don't think we'll have uh, payment nonces that actually get expired. Um, yeah. Because there will be pay, uh, like brain tree vault and stuff. Uh, but if for some reason something actually happens, something actually fails, it will still be caught. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. Any other question, guys? 
This is really cool, Ravant. I like your approach and the way that you set up the error handling for the child components. Mm -hmm. I think it makes it really easy for people to extend and add on to. Yeah. If they, if they have extra sections they want to add or, you know, Definitely. have special handling they want to do. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it is still not approved the way we have done this. I, it's just kind of a fancy way that I came up with, uh, where I was, uh, hold on, where is it? For some reason GitHub is kind of slow today. Okay. So here we have the checkout error. This is the, this is a special, uh, class we have created, you know, that extends the error message. So if someone wants to add, they can add functions to it. Like here I've added has, you know, payment expired. So when this error is drilled down to the children, they can call like error dot has payment expired, and they'll know uh, if this is a payment method, if this is a issue that they they have to handle. For instance, you can let's say you know to do they can add uh, each shipping payment method, and wherever they're using it, they can simply do error dot each shipping method information uh, error or something like that. And if it's true, that's when they handle it. Else they can just you know ignore it because it's someone else's error to handle. Uh, it it is still not approved at this point. It, it's a, a PR that is open. Uh, so this might change, but the underlying idea of sending it, uh, errors down to children and letting them handle it instead of checkout page handling it, I guess will stay the same. That way, you won't, you know, bloat up the, you know, the use checkout page and also the checkout page component. Any ideas? Any questions in the chat? Uh, Christopher mentioned, keep in mind mm -hmm. that the vaulting of cards is configurable in Magento and not always wanted or enabled by merchants. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a that's a nice, um, you know, solution. At this point, we don't have Vault enabled uh, because we don't have uh, all the GraphQL uh, uh, coverage for authenticated payment methods. Uh, but once we do it, definitely this is something we have to keep in mind. Gosh, very cool. All right, and then you actually have the next one too, the service worker okay. caching. Yes. All right, cool. Okay, and we are done with the checkout ship. Let's move to the service worker ship. Okay. I'll, I'll go back to develop. Uh, let me just crash the server. And a simple thing is, okay. So this is an error that um, uh, Jordan brought up. And uh, I guess one more uh, a community member, I guess Nicholas, uh, they, they did like most of the you know, uh, uh, research around this letting us know what the error might be. So what happened was the initial service worker that we have written, it used to cache the HTML file for ease of use. So when once you move from, let's say your home page to the category page, and then you move the category to product page, if you don't have SSR and stuff, usually the HTML page is the same thing. Like even if you go with a different HTML file on the top, like the URL, it tends to be the same HTML file. So instead of fetching it all the time, which usually takes uh, you know, a round trip for uh, maybe 100 bytes or one kilobyte, and also a time involved, we wanted to ship it directly from the service worker, and then the service worker internally fetches it from the server, and it compares the both HTML files, one which is in cache, and one it went, came back from the server. And if they are different because, just by file name changes or like the uh, script files have changed, it's meaning like a new deployment. The service worker sends a message to the UI saying um, a new version of the app is available. So the UI shows a toast and then someone clicks the toast, the app refreshes by getting the new version of the app. Uh, that worked fine, except for use cases where if someone loaded the app, and then they haven't used the app in a while, and new version of the app came come up, and people never refresh the page, and they go from home page to a category page. Error error comes up because there are certain files that are cached in the HTML file, but are deleted from the service worker and also the deployment because they're not available anymore. The server just made a new deployment, new client file, and new uh, Windows file, so the app used to crash, and 
Jordan was good enough to uh, create a video around it. Unfortunately, we cannot uh, demo it right now because uh, our develop has uh, the new set of code. The, the PR has been merged. But the good thing is, since we have the video from Jordan, we can actually look at it and see uh, the exact issue that used to happen before fixing this PR. I there hope this works just fine in, you know, uh, in Braintree. Uh, sorry, I meant blue jeans. Uh, first, we need to stop yep, so. the server. So right now he um, is starting the server, uh, and once he goes there, it works fine because okay. So right now I just switched off the audio because I can give the voice over. It's easy that way. Um, so once he went there, at this point the HTML file has been cached, and the and if you look at uh, the runtime vendors in client.js files, they have a 200, which means uh, this when the app loaded, when the HTML file loaded, these files have been requested and they have been cached in the service worker. But now uh, he is going back to his code and he's making a change to simulate a new version of the app being deployed. So right now he made the change, he is bundling it, and once that is done, the server is not crashed yet. The server is still running. All, all, the service, all the server does is when someone requests a file, it looks inside its file system and picks it up and returns it. So he doesn't need to crash the server at this point. Right side, there is the bundler that's going on. Okay, it's done. It has created all the new assets. And right now, he's going to the same app using a bookmark. Like he has a bookmark and once he clicks it, He's going there. Right now, the app has crashed. And that's because if you actually pay attention towards uh, the bottom of the, the terminal, runtime.hash.js and client.hash.js, they have a 404. This happened because the HTML file that was cached inside the service worker was returned first. And then that service worker had links to these uh, JS files which are not available anymore because of a new deployment. If the, if the user would have refreshed the page, this would have not happened because all the files would have been downloaded internally. Uh, and he's actually showing the same, like all the, the instances of these two HTML, uh, these two JS files have crashed. Uh, but we have fixed this using uh, workbox plugin, we, we uh, upgraded the workbox plugin to the latest version. And in the latest version, they kind of, uh, you know, helps us using uh, uh, the Webpack plugin that they have. What they do is once the Webpack process is done, uh, the bundling of it, it invokes, it, it actually injects all the assets that it has ejected in that bundling process into the service worker file. We can actually see that here. For, this is the bundled service worker file and here we have a list and an array of all the JS files that have been ejected from uh, Webpack. So what happens is we are telling service worker once it starts booting up in the, in the browser the first time, before it even gets activated, it is supposed to download all these files and pre-cache them into the service worker. By doing that, we are future proofing it. So even if someone is uh, is doing the same, like they opened the app and they haven't touched anything in a while and a new deployment comes in and they go to the new page, everything that the new page needs has already been cached. So they don't need to worry about like, uh, you know, 404 errors or, you know, uh, files missing. And once they refresh the page, a new service worker will be downloaded with the new set of assets. Uh, which were ejected by the new bundling process and the app preloads and everything comes back to the same. Uh, we can look at it here. I have the same setup, uh, I would call it a similar setup like Jordan has. Here uh, I have Yarn build, which is building the server, uh, building the code right now. And here, once it's done, I'll start the server. And let's clear the cache. 
Okay, this is done right now. I'll do the on stage linear. Okay, the server is ready. Let's go to the home page. I'll just clear the storage for now. Okay, uh, I'll do the same thing. I'll just refresh the page. So right now, if you see, it actually downloaded a lot of files. You can also see that here in the free cache. You can see that it actually downloaded 35 files compared to just three or four previously, because all these files, all these mini chunks were actually not involved in the HTML file previously. But now they are because they have been injected into the service worker. So even if we do the same, like um, go back to the example and like delete a piece of code just to replicate uh, a new deployment, I'll do the same. I'll yarn build. The server is still running. I can just close the tab, open the tab. I have a bookmark here. Okay, once this is done. Okay, it's done. So I'm, I'm doing the same thing. Once I click, oops, not check out, not 8984, um, this one, homepage, 9914. This is the server uh, that is running right now. It worked fine, it never crashed. And if you actually paid attention here, it actually downloaded all the new set of uh, files that were specific to this particular deployment like things that have changed and the things that haven't changed like the vendors file which usually doesn't change it, it shouldn't have been requested maybe a vendors you know, category which is like an internal you know mini chunk of vendors so we can see the same here all the files have been precached and if you look at the service worker the new service worker is actually running This is a lot of information at once, uh, but if someone wants to, uh, you know, understand like what is ex exactly happening, uh, I try to be explicit with all the things that are happening. I've written it down here uh, in this PR. It might be merged, but you can still go over it. And like, if, if you feel there's something that we have missed, please let us know. And actually, thanks to Zetlin, this is the third version of the app, uh, the third version of this PR that we had. The first two versions were way complicated, which I came up with. Uh, but Zetlin came up with this, which is way simpler. Even though it has 900 lines changed, it's a way simpler example. Uh, kudos to that. You're sweet. <laughs> I had a question, actually. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that list of files that it's going to pre-cache just kind of going to ever increase as we keep releasing versions of PWA Studio? Like, is that ever, do we ever throw any of those out? Like, oh, this is way too old. Uh, I guess it's the work box that takes care of uh, this. So what happens yeah. is when you actually looked here, it actually downloaded a lot of files, but you still see 35 files here, like 36, because index.html has been added. But everything else, like was the same because what happens is when the new service worker comes up, mm. it makes a diff between the pre-cache manifest it had previously and the pre-cache manifest it has in the new one. Okay. It understands what are the differences and deletes the unused files. So maybe a little more of a hit the very first time someone comes because yes. someone hits your PWA because they have to download all these files. But yeah. after that, yes. they should have them and then we don't have to yeah. worry about it. Yeah, okay. uh, one idea that, uh, one actually reason why Zetlin mentioned this is the nice idea is because the whole point of service worker is to, or like a PWA is to work offline. The previous instance that we had of the service worker, it wouldn't support offline because it would have downloaded your JS files, like the main JS files, but it wouldn't have downloaded these mini chunks unless you mm -hmm. actually went into that page. Like this, these are the chunks that are like written into the code base of this client.js file, for instance. So the service worker wouldn't even know how to actually cache them till it actually encounters this file and like reads through it file, reads, reads through the file. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, if we can make this offline, for instance, 
the app won't crash, but it will still show you offline because the HTML files and like you know the the uh, the GraphQL uh, you, it can't reach the GraphQL server, but the app won't crash with, because this app shell is part of a JS file that has cached here. So um, Boom. yeah, that's an important thing with PWA. So uh, that's a nice thing that we're doing right now, where we are caching everything out of Webpack. That's very cool. Any other uh, question? Thank you very much, uh, Rivant. Any other questions? I just want to um, clarify that I'm glad that you uh, told everyone I helped you, but like what happened was I was eager to figure out the Webpack plugin for Workbox before it had this feature where it could integrate into the existing compiler, and yet instead I just built a second one, and then I wrote some like Webpack integration and just added some complexity. And so we just had to unwind the stuff that I had made. So. <laughs> Everyone should feel free to do that uh, because later, you know, when we look at it, we, we might discover that things can get way simpler. Uh, and so I appreciate Revan for doing that. Code deleted is better than code written. Yeah, I did notice that in your PR too. You had like minus a thousand lines or something like that. <laughs> oh, Plus yeah. Eight. Yeah, yeah there that's you go. because Oof. we didn't have a package that's not needed anymore. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. That's awesome. It's Those a good thing. Are the best. It's the bundle size as well by removing that, that package. Very cool. All right, well, I think that's the content we have for today. Uh, Lars, if you're still here, we don't have anything for Community uh, Corner, right? Yeah. We only got about five minutes left. No. You guys want to see something cool? Yeah. All right. Sure. So, Carlos, Go you're ahead. online, aren't you? <laughs> Carlos, you still yep. here? So, yeah, here. Uh, remember how you really like Next.js? Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I like it, it too. Like, no, I, I totally <laughs> like it too, right? Uh, and there are some great advantages to it. Um, so, I was thinking, like, what if there was an extension for PWA Studio that just made it do routing like Next.js. What if that? To have the, the file structure routing? Kind of a leading question because there is now. Um, <laughs> I have <I'm> a cool. <laughs> repository. I have a repository uh, called PWA Studio Target Experiments. Uh, and let me just. Can you use the font? That is not what I wanted. Uh, I can, just give me a second. I just, uh, damn it. Ah! Uh, <laughs> okay. Let's stop the recording. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, this okay. Uh, so now that I have pushed it, my target experiments repository, which is available here at Magento Research, will eventually contain kind of some examples of how you might add some functionality and then maybe pull requests to PWA Studio to enhance that functionality so that your plugin can work a little bit easier. I made a Next.js routes plugin. So in your PWA Studio, if you want to enjoy my plugin, you go to your ENV and you add this build bus depths additional and link it to your repository. That's actually all documented here. And so now, let's say in my PWA Studio, I had a folder called Pages. Mm -hmm. This Pages folder just has hello next.md.js. So what if I now went to hello next.md? What if I <laughs> restarted the watch server and then went to hello <laughs> next? <laughs> Uh huh. How does this overlap with Upward, with the Upward configuration file? The Upward configuration file. So just to be clear, this isn't doing any special SSR. This is just giving you the ability to organize things in the way that you're familiar with. So now you have a Pages okay. directory. You can put files in there. I mean, we're going to support more and more as time goes on, certainly. But mm -hmm. uh, the the main thing about this is to demonstrate that you can have an external integration, which is actually pretty easy to make. 
which says, all right, when the Webpack compiler is booting up and asking for routes, you can just look through your pages directory and then mm -hmm. push them into the routes. And furthermore, we went ahead and supported the dynamic variables. So there we go. Uh, I've also added a markdown plugin so that you can just make a mm -hmm. markdown page and it just automatically looks nice. So that page is being driven by this file. And then we have a compare. It's really simple and dumb, but we have a folder compare with a subfolder called left and a subfolder called right. And those have brackets because mm -hmm. they translate into parameters, which Carlos is already familiar mm -hmm. with. And so we're just grabbing a couple of products. So let's say I just happen to know offhand that we'll compare VD11 and VD10. We got about one minute left, Seven. That's it. Check that out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we are we are actually grabbing uh, dynamic elements from the URL because of the Next.js style uh, routes. Carlos, I didn't forget about you. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. We'll take it offline and talk more, but uh, this is this is where the additional functionality happens. Uh, I hope that uh, you enjoy. All That's right. very nice. I'm completely Thanks. sure what was that, but. Uh, I'm sure that's a crazy thing. <laughs> yeah, um, it, we'll, we'll explain more uh, uh, offline, but there are a few other neat things in this uh, experiment repository that work pretty well. I'll show you later. Mm -hmm. awesome. It makes sense you when you much. move all of your routes into page folders. Very cool, very cool. All right, we got to run. That's it for today. Stay safe. Honk, Thanks. honk. Click like uh -huh. and subscribe. <laughs> Bye, guys. See you guys.